Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered with Pastor David. Uh, Pastor, today I wanted to speak a little bit about the church. And uh, we all remember during COVID that there was a time where we were, the actual building was shut down, but yet we were still, people were still coming by and, and seeing you and some of the people that were there that were either coming for prayer. And, and, uh, and then when COVID lifted, there was this expectation for people to return like a welcome home. And the reality was, is that it wasn't that great homecoming as we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And even now that COVID restrictions have totally lifted, there still seems to be a sense of those staying at home. I don't know if there's what it is. And even some leaving the church. And so you get the combination of, the, of COVID and then the online church and then people leaving. What are your thoughts on that, Pastor? I think that the, um, the time that we had undergoing, we're undergoing the situation with COVID was a time of proving, a time of refining in the fellowship. I was um, greatly concerned uh, during that time because of the government mandate to, to no longer fellowship and all. And so at the beginning of that, um, you know, closing down of uh, houses of worship and all, because we didn't know how this particular virus was being transmitted completely and all, we didn't have that much information I felt it was wiser to temporarily close down our um, live meetings and all because I wanted to protect the health of the people in our fellowship. That's what shepherds do. We want to make sure that the people are cared for. But you know, you and I, others, uh, my wife included, would come to the church grounds in the event that somebody, and they always did, would show up and need some ministry or mm -hmm. whatever. And so we, we still actually remained serving uh, it just wasn't in the regular church services. And ultimately, after a few weeks, we, we realized that uh, we weren't getting all of the information. And the information that was being spread, as is proven now, uh, was not always accurate. And so my feeling for that was to protect the sheep. I, I, I don't want someone to ever fall into some kind of hurt because of my perception of what faith is and as I live out my faith. I... I am not here to to take over somebody's faith. I'm here to help them in the joy of their faith, you know. So that's how we handled it at first, John, as you remember. So during that time, it seems that quite a number of people decided that um, watching online was a better thing than being there live, which is is not really true. And hopefully some have discovered, many have discovered that that's really not true. Because the, the body of Christ was not created by God to be in isolation. The body of Christ is intended to be just that, a body, where hands and feet and the rest of the, the members of the church are to be, um, to be recognized and utilized and all of that. And so some failed to understand the need for fellowship. Some uh, uh, misunderstood the entire purpose of the church to do the work of ministry it requires the body of Christ to work together. Every joint is to operate and all of that so that we can do the work of the Lord. And so some people came to realize that and they filtered back over time. There are others who decided that this fellowship, this particular part of the body, the overall world body of Christ was not their home anymore. And uh, I, just, I just pray that they go to wherever it is that they're fed mm -hmm. spiritually. That's my great desire. And then there are others who discovered that Christian faith for them wasn't a real thing. They never returned, not just to this church fellowship, but to any church fellowship. Uh, I grieve over them because they have lost the opportunity to, to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But I think it was a pruning that took right. place in many ways. And those who wanted to be here, John, as you know, in this fellowship, they returned. Those who saw that as an opportunity to visit other fellowships and discovered that that's a place that they fit in and uh, their gifts and and all can be utilized best, then that's good for them too. Um, so with that, I think that it was a, a purging in some ways in, in our fellowship. There was a building up in mm -hmm. some ways. Those who were here really wanted to be here. It became refreshing that people weren't just deciding just to get up and leisurely walk out when they just felt that something was said they didn't like. You know, that was becoming 
pretty much, well, that's been common for many years because the narcissists, there's so many narcissists that go to church who <clears throat> they want it their way, like it's a Burger King or something, and they want it their way. And when it's not said their way, or when they have heard something maybe more than once and they think, oh, this is repetition, I need some fresh stories. Well, I'm not a storyteller in that way. I do teach with stories, but I'm not that. I'm not here to tell stories to people to, to make them feel good about themselves. So I, I saw that purging taking place. But by and large, uh, those who have remained and those who are actually now showing up and thank, thankfully the, the pews are beginning to fill up more. I pray they continue to, um, have, they're, they're normally now occupied by people who want to be there, right. John, yeah. you know, and, and I, I see that as a good thing. But overall, I, I saw the COVID thing and the 24-7 propaganda mm -hmm. by the government that I truly, and I'm not a conspir conspir conspiracy person, as you know, but it seems too obvious to me that it was used to the advantage of uh, the Democrats. It, 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 it's quite obvious that it was used to their advantage where their presidential candidate didn't even have to campaign, didn't even have to debate. And so they did that then and they're still using that tactic now. But by and large, the people who were going to church, well, we came to realize and understand that then in California, you've got a, a governor who decides to go to a very expensive restaurant, doesn't wear a mask or you have a senator who decides that she's going to get her hair done and doesn't wear a mask, you know, so the laws are for you and not for me. And we saw that more clearly than ever. Didn't change the way people voted because I think that sheep don't care if they're being lied to as long as they may get some free thing or whatever. Yeah. And that, that was a bother to me. But overall with the church, I think the church um, was strengthened. This fellowship, this particular body of believers was, was strengthened. I believe the online uh, option at that time was a was a viable option. I think so. And uh, but now that everything has been lifted, there's no restrictions. It's it's kind of cool to see the people returning, and uh, the excitement of the gospel, the excitement and worship, and and uh, especially now when things are getting so dark, and uh, and even as we're preparing for the Christmas season, we're seeing more people come back, and I think that's a, a work of the Lord as uh, that pruning has taken place. And uh, I was thinking about it this morning, Pastor. It, it really shook things up. Here at the church, we had to turn things on a dime. We had once Sunday an audience, and now, or the congregation, the people that were here, and now everything's 100% online. Mm -hmm. But what the amazing thing was, I, and I believe, Pastor, the, it was the, the small beginnings that we really don't talk about, being out there every Sunday, mm -hmm. and people were showing up. Nobody knew about it. No. And it was those times when that couple came from Riverside and, and they saw you and they prayed and they were weeping. Mm -hmm. And uh, those times, I think, were the faithful in the small things at that time, be faithful in these other I things. I really think that that is ministry. I mean, um, they were coming to deposit their offering to the Lord and just so happened that we were there. And yeah, I remember that. That was very touching how uh, they approached and visited and probably under different circumstances, that's not as easy or, you know, or as possible because we've got numbers of people who come up and speak to me. But they had their opportunity to, and I had my opportunity to visit and pray with them. So yeah, I saw God do some very good things. And, and uh, I'll close by saying uh, that um, there are those who may be watching this right now who haven't yet returned to live services and I really encourage them to do so um, because it's not good that man should be alone. Mm -hmm. God created us for fellowship. Amen. And my encouragement would be to come, to come. I would love to see you. Amen. And with that, church family, we do have our Wednesday night service uh, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. You're taking us through the book of 1 John yep. and a great opportunity to invite your friends. And if maybe you've been watching online, come on out and join us and uh, be a part of our worship. and and part of our praise and spending time in God's Word. And then Sunday morning we have our 8.30 and 10.45 services as Pastor, you're taking us through the book of Mark. Amen. And so I want to invite you guys to come out and join us. Pastor, again, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us. And, you know, I'm thinking back again, thank you so much for the faithfulness that even in those days and uh, when we had COVID, 
uh, the faithfulness that you had shown our church. That we've shown. I wasn't alone. You were there too. <laughs> I think because they were serving donuts. I mean, that was well, the only. Uh, reason. You were the one. Yeah, right. that's, that's why you came here in the first place. Well, why not? <laughs> church family, thank you so much. God bless you, and thank you for tuning in.